Welcome, welcome, welcome to Kickstarter Radio 102.4. And today we have a love letter to the Isofarian Guard. Now this is an epic, epic campaign and what the box has grown in. It's, well, it's really evolved into a monster box. Oh my goodness, this is something you really need to put your eyes on. But let Lick Lick Patty tell you all about this incredible journey this game has gone on and where it is today and how you can late pledge. So, Lipstick Patty, please take it away. The Isafarian God. Ooh. Now, (laughs) I love doing these love letters because it gives me a soapbox to wax lyrical about a game that I'm late pledging for. Now, there's something of interest here which is even going to spawn a new video, and it's how this Kickstarter seems to progressing through. And it's something all Kickstarters can learn from. But, essentially, what we're looking at here is an unofficial Skyrim game, which is interesting because we're getting Skyrim, the board game, official coming out. And when IPs come out and they're going up against... A unofficial IP in board gaming, they usually get slaughtered. For example, this year we had Primal, The Awakening versus Monster Hunter, the official board game, and Primal kicked its ass, didn't it? Anyway, Skyrim official has got a massive bar to get over because Ice Guard has just blown it out of the water. Right, hang on. We need to tell you a story here, so get ready. Here we go. Ice Ferry and Guard kickstarted two years ago. Two, two years ago. It was tremendously successful then. You could say 4,000 backers, but only bringing in a quarter of a million. It was a different time two years ago. In fact, it predates this channel. And as you go down, it does have that Skyrim feel. A large map and um, two characters on each mini. Interesting. It has poker chips. It has all these characters. This has all been updated. but All this is kind of the old thing that we're looking at here. This map here of the city actually represents... Um, zoomed in locations of the big map here so you can go into detail and actually visit areas of these zoomed in parts of the map which is delicious. On the right here you can see a skill tree and there was a little bit of people complaining about these and these have all been updated to make sure that they are much more fun to go through because people felt they were a bit too linear where if you were min maxing you just follow one route and two two thirds of the skill tree would just be poo poo so they've redone these they have a quick save system which is delicious and um, these big folders here these represent chapters one to five and all this is kind of old we're going to look at some new stuff but i'm just giving you an overview and my god, has this game exploded. Um, so yeah, this is where it was. And it was looking kind of cool. But it kind of was sitting for like, you know, 18 months and growing into something really special. And over that 18 months, it's kind of completely changed. And this is what will is like the biggest thing that is happening because what's happened is the company have got a copy from the manufacturer which is almost final, right? It's as close to the final game as you're going to get. And they've took the time to extend the pledge manager by two months. Now, normally, when a company gets the final copy, they go straight, they green light the production of the whole game, right? So, but this extra two months, yeah, it's a delay 
The two month delay is potentially going to make the game later for backers, but this two month delay, which is now what we're in, is actually giving time for people to come back and late pledge this because they're showing some fantastic things in the updates. Hmm. All right. Including what the play map looks like, the extended board. You can see the, bo the, the game on the right here is the original prototype and the box on the left is the preview from the manufacturer. And this box is still not big enough for the content. <laughs> the box will actually come the same size as a calic shelf hole. So it's going to fill a whole hole of the calic shelf, which is massive. It really is. It's really exciting. There's some really good videos from Quackalope and um, unboxings where you can see all the delicious components that you're getting. And um, they're just giving a shout out here for Tenaris because it's an amazing Kickstarter. So let's go back to this one. Oh, this is the update 38. They have these fantastic graphic design parts here showing you where everything is at. So they're almost 100% through it. And um, you can see when you watch the videos of the unboxing, it looks delicious. It's like, oh my God, this game is so luxurious. And then when you look at the cost to get this box, you're going to be floored. Like you'd think, oh my God, this is such a big box of all these things and it must be like 180, 200, 200 dollars. No, no, no. <laughs> it's super cheap. Wait till you see it. So essentially, campaign five is the thing that's taking a bit longer. They're actually writing the script because the script was, or is, and always was planned to go on the foreteller. Um, app so you can actually when you visit a location you can hit the foreteller app on the phone and it would read out the text from the campaign book from with professional actors doing it so and each of your characters is a, a character in the game so they'll have their own voice in the game as well it's really exciting so the they've still got some ways to go and it's going to come up maybe quarter one next year quarter two Oh man, the box up. The unboxing's fascinating. It's so fascinating. And uh, there's some good dev videos as well. Um, let me just go back. Oh, there's some pictures here, but you can go. I'll show you one video that I, I highly recommend. It just looks stupendous. The way you can save your game is wonderful as you put like a, a massive um, cover over the top of these, put them in the box. It's so good. And, um, oh man, you're just going to be, your eyes are going to pop out when you see it. They have got a Kickstarter coming out this week. Dungeons of Infinity, second printing. Yeah, this is just a preview of that. So let me just go back when I think there's a good video. Um, maybe I've lost it. There's so much information that you can get on this, but this is actually quite interesting. You'll see in the playthroughs that when you go to a shop in a city, it actually has a little book and it has like a catalogue. You can see this is the this is what um, Silni in the Rhinox Square can make as long as you are what he's selling here. Sometimes it's crafting. This is you need these um, might need certain materials to craft it. Um, and he'll tell you how much he'll buy it off you if you have these as well. So this is nice. You're looking like at a catalogue and seeing, oh, look, at you're kind of previewing what you could get if you got certain materials and stuff like that. So it's like very exciting things, stuff that you can craft. It's a bit like Madara when you go through the item slots and you're going into the pristine armors and stuff. You're like, oh my God, look how good that is. And I think that's really, really good. So... Let's go to the late pledge. Now, I love the game on tabletop late pledge. It's really good. I think that the art that we're seeing here in this box is coming from the original Kickstarter. And now that they have the preview page, I don't know why they've not put the massive box here to just wow you when you come in here. Because it's only $79. 
What? <laughs> and considering um, on Kickstarter, if you look over here, it was a quarter of a million. It's actually made more in the late pledge, which is wonderful. Now you've got 57 days from this video, so you've at least you've got at least two months. And um, they've said that the price 79 here is super cheap. And after these days are over, the the, sh the game is going to at least double in its price for late pledges. So this is a, gr a grace period to get it at 79 bucks, right? However, the game was designed to read out the pages and it, it, they've got examples that you can listen to. And I'll tell you now, it's spectacular. So I, and it is expensive. If you look at like Gloomhaven, the foreteller, um, not Gloomhaven, Frosthaven is also getting Fortell as well. So this is becoming popular with these big adventure games. And I, it really does make them fantastic. Now you can go 109, which is $15. And you get the soundtrack to play during the game. And for this $15, and you get the massive play map that's stitched. We get a little view of this as we go down. I think, I've got to, I think I've got to select it to see it. This is what the board would look like. And if you notice the right here, it's the right hand side which is going to extend. And just click this one. Uh, I'm just going to... You've got to like play the game, haven't you? Okay, I'm going to go for... Let's just pick the cheapest. No, no, the 109, this is the one where I went in, okay. Here's the mat. Now the black bit on the right here is going to actually be with art. You get to see this on the unboxing actually. And the game does have fishing, so I don't think there's gameplay out here, it's just to make it look extended, but um, yeah, you are going to be going in the sea and doing stuff. What I like about it is that you've got five chapters in this area of the map. So you're going to be going from one city to another city, picking up quests, side quests, all this stuff. And it's a bit like Rune Wars, where you're in the same area. But here it's so much better because all the little the story points and the story beats will come from the foreteller. And these chips that you've seen here are going to go in a big bag and you're doing a lot of bag pulling to see what kind of encounter you've found. Maybe it's a good encounter or an enemy and then you pull from the enemy bag to see which enemy it is. Um, on the right here there's a massive deck here of enemies and that, what I really love about it is, for example, if you're fighting this wolf which is in the deck here, the wolf has a deck of cards. So when you pull out a random card from the wolf, that'll be the AI that you're fighting. And it could be really aggressive and you might have to run away from it. But you find another wolf and when you pull the card out of the deck, it's a really easy fight. In fact, the wolf could be running away from you. So this is what I like. You, you, if you find another animal, it could have a completely unpredictable AI and certainly will be different. Love it. And um, it, it's super cool. I mean, there's so much to love here. Sleeve pack as well you can get here, which <laughs> I love sleeving. So this is fantastic. Especially when if you buy sleeves in Mexico, you've got to pay for shipping and stuff like that. It is $30. So that's like a lot of, a lot of them, isn't it? Um... Yeah, you can get extra boxes and stuff like this, but it's super, super cool, peeps. So really, go for the 109 pledge is where you go to because you're getting the foreteller thing, which is like an actor. Like I say, you're, you're going to be voice acting. It's, it sounds fantastic because the, the campaigns have all been written as a script. And that's where actors 
really could get onto it, you know. Um, you notice the weight here, 30 pounds! Oh my God, in weight. So this box is gonna be an absolute beast and it's gonna be it's Skyrim in a box. It's Skyrim in a box. And the official Skyrim is, is gonna have its head chopped off by this game. And of course the grace time of this, um, can we go back? I want to go back. I want to go back. Let's just go down here while I talk about it. The grace time of the 60 days will actually, I think, go towards the Skyrim official. And it, Skyrim official needs to have a big map of Skyrim at the Elder Scrolls. It needs to be able to go to bits on the map like we're seeing here. You need to get random encounters and events and things happening. And it has an open world nature like here, as well as a main campaign. It needs to do all of this what Ice Fairy and Guard has done. But I don't think it will. I'll be I'll be floored if it does anything like this and beyond that. I mean the the developers that are doing Skyrim, they're known for dungeon crawls. They're not they're not open world specialists. <laughs> I don't know what Bethesda was thinking. They should have got the team behind Ice Fairy and Guards to do a Skyrim game. But the they just want money and they've, they've given it out to a developer who's, who's dungeon crawlers. And Skyrim, you don't do much dungeon delving in Skyrim. Most of the time you're out in the map. Like you are here for Ice Varying Guard. Oh, man. So yeah, you, you're finding things, you're mining, you're fishing, you're crafting. Your character's upgrading. The quick save system, fully voiced acted narration and orchestral score. Oh man, it's so good. And I, like I say, Foreteller is the next stage of board gaming for adventures. It really is. And this has been a massive one for Foreteller. There's so much in it. And this is an app that's been used in a good way because you've only got one campaign book. And if you're reading it and it goes to the next character, you're going to pass the book around the table. So this is phenomenal. I really love it. Now, let's go down because they do have some music that you can listen to. It really is good. And... This lady here, she is Julie Elven, who is a massive fantasy singer. World of Warcraft, League of Legends, Horizon Zero Dawn. She's really good. She does the kind of... The dawn of time is coming. <laughs> Listen to her, she's she's really good. Um, so she, they've got like the pro that does all the fantasy games. It's going to be great. Oh my god, it's going to be good. Prototype pictures. Um, these are not the prototype pictures. Update your pictures. We want the new stuff. And look, there's only a little slot of these. Um, so yes, the game on tabletop has needs to be updated with this new version of the game, with this giant box that it has become. They've actually said that the shipping price from the original Kickstarter has gone up considerably because the box has grown considerably. <laughs> I don't mind that. I, I really don't mind paying extra shipping if the box gets so much bigger. And to take up a huge Calyx hole is like, wow, this is gonna be great. Because 
It's Skyrim with amazing music, amazing acting in the Forteller. I keep calling it Forteller. It is Forteller. That sounds amazing. But, you know, solo or two-player narrative-driven board game. Oh, so much going on, peeps. Now, Quackalope and Board Game Co., they are planning to do a playthrough. Um, they're in the middle of editing it as I'm recording this video. I can't wait to watch them. But do visit the YouTube sites because they've got unboxings and one unboxing with the dev as well. So I'd push your research out if you're still not convinced. But trust me, dear God, for 79 dollars Box, what an amazing amount of content you're getting. I mean, you're getting nothing like this on Kickstarter, even in the last two years. It all, you can almost draw a line in 2019, because in 2019, the bar was still fairly low for Kickstarter games. And since then, the bar's been risen, where costs of games have just escalated. So this is almost an old Kickstarter coming to fruition now and keeping its low price. So it almost stands out as an absolute bargain. Oh, <laughs> oh it's, a, it's a bargain. And is it so much, you know, you've got that, you can upgrade to get the play map, which is bigger than the main thing and all this good stuff. You get sleeves and stuff. It's all amazing, peeps. So there we go, Ice Fairy and Guard. You've got a two month window to do a bit of research on it. You should be hearing this, hearing more about this, I guess, in the next couple of weeks as it, the big box is going out to a few YouTubers. But, um, oh man, it's so, so good. So get on it before it doubles in price and um, don't waste your time with the Skyrim official that's coming out on GameFound. It's going to be nowhere as ambitious as this beast. Oh my god. Nowhere near. I will eat my hat if it is bigger than this. <laughs> oh my god. Peeps, get down in the comments. Let me know what you think of Isofarian Guard. For those people that have been pledging this since the beginning, they have loved the journey of this game. It really has been a special, um, I guess, two years of, in the making. And, um, you know, the ma one of the magics of Kickstarter is following the campaign, right? So, and I'm sure these people are loving the fact that this prototype is not, it's almost finished prototype. It's the final copy, first print from the uh, manufacturer. This is great because more people are getting to see it now. You know, the landscape of YouTube now for Kickstarters is so much better than it was in 2019. So hopefully more people will realize how great it is. And this late pledge can really exceed all expectations for the devs here, which need... Um, you know... They, they, you push this up so much. Um, you know, you, want, you really want to help these devs that have created an absolute beast of a game here. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, peeps, hopefully you've got time to come in here and get this fantastic game. Um, please give the thumbs up if you like the content. I hope you uh, really enjoy the fantastic journey of finding out what is in the what's in the big big box that it has become because it's evolved and all that good stuff especially when kickstarters that are coming up here in september very very expensive and if you compare them to this there's a clear difference in value <laughs> which has almost been the topic of the week so thank you so much for watching. If you like Kickstarter content, please think about subscribing and ringing that bell. Um, and you've been listening to Kickstarter Radio 102.4. I'm the host, Lipstick Patty. You take care, stay safe, and bye-bye for now.